Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be installing the shock absorber, uh, but not just installing the shock absorber, I'm going to be figuring out my mounting locations on the control arm. I'm going to be figuring out my, my, my mounting location up in the chassis and making sure that with those mounting locations, I get full travel. So what I did on my bug is, I determined maximum compression and then I measured how high off the ground that was and then I cut this piece of steel. So I know that if I if I crank the suspension up all the way and put this piece of steel in here, that will be my maximum compression. And then I did the same thing for droop. If I take this out and put this bar in here and have it hold up the, uh, the control arm, that's my maximum droop. So that's when I'm determining my full compression and full droop, these are what I'll use to set it. And this has all been predetermined off of ground clearance and my drive shaft angles. So with my, with my shock absorber temporarily bolted in place on my temporary control arm mounting position, then I put the lower control arm into full compression by putting in my predetermined bar. Then up in the chassis here with the shock fully compressed, I've taken the springs off. This will tell me roughly where the shock absorber will be on the chassis side. So for starters, <clears throat> with my upper control arm in full compression, I've got my shock absorber mounted on here. I've got a straight edge, so I've got my shock absorber going 90 degrees up from the control arm. This is a good starting point. Then inside the chassis, I can start looking at what I'm going to be able to fabricate for my shock mounting location. And what I'm actually going to do initially is I'm just going to take some, some wood or some aluminum or something, I'm going to clamp a temporary mount to see if I can conjure up a way to, to fix this temporarily so that I can cycle the suspension in its full travel and make sure that that lower control, mark, lower control mount is going to work or if I'm going to need to slide it in or out. Okay, so I've been cycling this thing up and down and up and down and up and down. Each time I do a cycle, I, I better um, adjust and get the mounting positions more to where I, where I want them. And I think at this point, I pretty much have them where I want them. On the bottom here, I've made, I've been working a little bit more on my mount. This is, this is the mount that I will actually be welding onto this control arm. Right now, it's just vice gripped everywhere because as I've been adjusting my connection points, I've been sliding it forward and backwards a little bit to get the optimal setting. I think this is where I'm going to keep it, which is pretty far back, which, which is good. Up at the top here, um, I've got this wooden block, jig, whatever you want to call it, in place. I've been adding spacers, I've been sliding it back and forth a little bit um, to get the top, top of this shock absorber roughly where I want it. My next step is to bend this tube and to get my tabs on there, possibly tack them in place, and then do more cycles to find out if it's exactly where I want it before I start welding things up solid. So on a separate video, the one with the uh, basic tube bending, I did the fabrication of this brace that's running across here for the shock absorbers to mount to and I've also made these brackets for the shock absorbers to mount to. What I need to do now is continue with cycling the suspension up and down so that I can figure out roughly where these need to go. I've bolted those brackets to the shock absorber. I've got it snugged up in place with some mechanics wire and I've got my welding magnet on here to help hold it in place. What I'm going to do now is cycle, cycle the suspension up and down a couple times so I can see how that shock positioning is going to work with the top and the bottom mounts roughly put in place. I've made some changes to the mount on the bottom. I've made some changes to the mount on the top. Every time I cycle it and every time I, every time I make some changes, you have to cycle it again because if you change the height of your lower or the location of the lower and the same with the top, it will affect the other one. So if you change this one, 
it will affect the endpoints of the top one. So I've been going up and down, up and down. I've kept moving this back a little bit to get it so that at full droop, I had about an inch left on this shock absorber. And on the top, I actually shortened this bracket a little bit to bring the shock absorber up a little bit. And then I've pushed the mount in a little bit because um, I'm trying to get the shock absorber as as straight up and down as I can at full compression. So this is my final product here. I'm done welding up the, the brackets on the lower control arm. I did end up putting three holes in the side plate here so that I could do some rosette welds just because I really wanted to get it welded as solid as I could to the side of the control arm there. Um, and then I, in a separate video I made the inside tab there. I've got that TIG welded on also. I'm really happy with the way that this lower mount turned out. Um, when I go from full droop to full compression, I've got about um, an inch of shock absorber left on full droop. And at full compression, I've got about half an inch of shock absorber left. And that's, uh, that's really good because that gives me a little bit something extra um, just in case I make some minor changes with future designs or whatnot. Up at the top here, I've got the the crossbar here is tack welded in place and this shock mount is tack welded in place. What I'm going to do in a future video is I'll have to actually, I'll have to pull the body off of the chassis so that I, I can actually get in there and, and solid weld where this tube meets the chassis. Uh, so that's, that will be a future project. I also need to rerun some of the supports tying in the roll bar here. so. I think I'll uh, I'll put those in place first, and then I'll pull the body off so that I can solid weld those all at the same time. That will be it for this project. I'm also going to have another project where I tie in my limiting straps and fabricate some bump stops. I'm not going to actually put the put all the springs back on the shock absorbers and actually put the weight of the vehicle onto this uh, new suspension until I have my limiting straps and bump stops in place. And once I once I do the bump stops and the limiting straps on this side, then I'll do a, a full project where I build out the complete other side because if you've been following these videos from the get-go, I said I was going to fabricate just this side first to see how it, how it works. And I think at this point, I think I'm liking it and I'm gonna go with it. So when I finalize this side, then I'm gonna have to kinda shift gears and fabricate everything all over again so that I can do the other side. It will go quicker because everything that I did on this side I made templates for so when I do the other side, although it's going to be a lot of work, it will just be a, a matter of tracing and cutting things out and welding them back together. So thanks for watching the video guys. Uh, I really appreciate it. I hope it inspires you to get out there and work on your own project. I know myself sometimes. It's hard to go to work all day and then come home and go right back out in the garage and work on something. So sometimes I'll watch some YouTube videos to see what other guys are working on, how they're doing things, and just to get some inspiration. Um, hopefully some of you are watching my videos to get that to help you with your projects. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.